let the chips fall. You know, last time at this year, last time, uh, last year at this time, excuse me, Lansing exploded with right to work legislation. And this end of session is causing some heated debate as well, setting around education and the EA, as you heard, and insurance coverage for abortion. And since we've been talking about education, let's start with the EAA. Stephen, let me start with you. Do you think this is finally the right step to codify this? I think it needs to be codified because uh, the fact that it wasn't made it very difficult to know what it was, what the standards were. Uh, a lot of the transparency problems, I think, uh, owe to the lack of legislation actually uh, making that part of, of, of state law. I'm, I'm less enthusiastic about the idea of expanding it quite yet because we just don't know whether it's working. We know that, 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 that there's some improvement in the schools that are in it, and that's, that's good, but it's, but it's slow. And I think you gotta, you got to give them three years to actually okay, show, Okay, so I was going to ask you, perform. how long? Three years? I think in any school, and I covered education for, for most of, of, of my career before I wrote uh, editorials, uh, I, I think anybody would tell you, you, you need three years to really tell whether an educational program is taking root and having the effect that you want it to have. It's too early to say, to claim success or failure before that. And so everybody, the critics of EAA are too early saying that it's a failure. The people who are trumpeting this saying, we found the solution, let's, let's put it everywhere are also too early. You've got to give them time to show what they can do and so that we can learn how to, how to either stop the failure or grow the success. Do you think there should be a cap, cap on the expansion of I don't, this, I, Nolan? I've been skeptical of the EAA from the beginning. Um, and you know, as I asked uh, Flanagan during that interview, if these schools are failing, if they're the worst schools in a district that has too much capacity, why not just shut them down and work on schools that are a notch better? Or given the fact that there's such an amount of quality school choice now in Detroit, you have good quality charter operators out there uh, with empty seats. Why are we spending this effort and this money on schools we're not certain we can fix. Shut them down and get those kids into good schools well, and don't waste three years of their education. But the, well, but the problem in Detroit actually is that there aren't enough good schools. There's a lot of choice in Detroit. There's a lot of options. And aren't we looking uh, at almost, almost but over, we know over 50 percent? Over 50 percent are not in Detroit public schools? Right Absolutely. No, that's true. But look, you, you know who the good operators are. You know the quality charters. We don't but they're not enough of them. Bring them in then. Well, Why not bring them in instead of fool with this fixing schools that are dismal. This is a very costly, lengthy exercise. But this is also an exercise that in other states, and again, we're, we're really bad at, at Michigan at uh, looking at somebody else's success and figuring out how to get some of it for ourselves. Well, no, well, we always want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, look at New Orleans. Look at what New York has done. Uh, uh, look at what they're doing in Maryland. All of these states have these kinds of uh, recovery district efforts where they take the lowest performing schools and they turn them around. You have to do that because uh, in a lot of these areas, it's very difficult for kids to get from one place to another to, to, to a new school that may be further away. Um, you want to give everybody a, a quality choice option in their neighborhood. In New Orleans, and, they picked one model. They shut all the schools down. And went started to complete, over. Complete charter system. We're trying a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We've got half a dozen different models going in Detroit. I'm not sure that's productive. Pick one and go with it and ride it and and commit to to something that, that might actually work. All right, I want to jump uh, to what the, the legislature was talking about this week and talking about a rider for, um, for abortion coverage for insurance and the Citizens Initiative. Um, talk to me a little bit, Stephen. I want to back up. and People may not realize how this even came to be in the fact that the legislature can just vote on this and the governor can't veto it. Well, it's it. part of our goofy initiatory petition. And goofy uh, is a technical term. Yeah, goofy is a technical term when you're talking about our Constitution, which I'm going to bring it up again. We had an opportunity to go into the Constitution and fix all this stuff several years ago. Or make a Lots of mess. people, including my friend over here, uh, said, no, 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 we don't need to do that. the state would have been out of the woodwork. Uh, there's no question. Trying but to now, get their piece of the Constitution. Okay, but, but the bottom line we have is the you, had, running the state you had over 300,000 signatures that fast-tracked this to where the legislature has to make a decision, can vote on this and, and put it directly. It. Yes, uh, without without ever having a majority of of the people take a take a look at it and decide for themselves, which I think is pretty uh, undemocratic. Three hundred thousand sounds like a lot 
of people, and it is, but it's it's a fraction the of, of the total number of people in the state. I think it's, what, 3% or, or, or it's less. It's an abuse of the legislative majority, I think. The, they tried this once. The governor vetoed it. That's how the process should work. Right to life um, flexed its muscles here. They really put their friends in the legislature, the Republican friends, in a really bad place. They gave them a choice of passing it now or having it go automatically on the ballot next fall, which is what would have happened had they rejected it. And they, they did not want that on the ballot in, an, yeah. in, in right, because, 2014. Because, did again, Michiganders deserve to vote on this? Oh, I think so. If, if, if we were going to do it, they, the, the, it should have been uh, by referendum. Uh, there's no question in my mind about that. I don't think it's, I don't think it's an issue important enough frankly, to even be on the ballot. This is about uh, a very narrow uh, ideology. So why did this happen? The... Uh, well, again, I think Right to Life was flexing its muscle here. As Steve said, I mean, this is a very small issue. You forgot, I had a lot of hysterical rhetoric about this, but only 3% of the abortions are in Michigan are paid for by insurance. And even women who have that coverage now, and not all policies coverage cover abortion. Many, many don't. That's a choice that's left to the customer. But even women who have abortion coverage in their insurance policy don't file claims. Uh, so this was a very, very but small you, percentage of it, the abortions. It's a small state. issue in that way. It was way. unnecessary to it's even just, take off. You it's said hysterical rhetoric. Way. I yeah. think people would argue that it was passionate, uh, passionate yeah, debate. Yeah, and, and it's passionate about about a a, a very bi basic individual right that uh, that conservatives don't recognize for women, which is to control their own uh, reproductive uh, lives. And so in, it is it is no one's right in the sense that most people don't ever have occasion to use uh, the, the, this part of their insurance, but the idea that they don't have the right to is what has everyone worked up, and they have a right to be there. But, you know, a, good number, of, seconds, a good number of insurance policies don't cover it now, and this was just a case of right to life wanting to um, to sort of call a, uh, you know, call allegiance amongst the, the legislature, put people on the spot and make them stand up and say, you know, I'm with you, I'm going to get you. This was a ridiculous measure to push. It, it has so little impact, and yet it's going to cause political problems for the very people they expect to support them. I was just going to say, last 10 seconds, are Republicans, Republicans going to pay for this next year? I, I, I don't think they can, because they drew the maps uh, in the legislature. Both the Senate and the House are, are very solidly uh, Republican, it's going to be very difficult to exact revenge if you're if you're Democrat. All right, we're going to have to leave it there, and that's going to do it for my week. Make sure you check us out online at myweek.org and on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Christy McDonald. Take care. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Thursday.